Here with Faces here today. Uh, some of you saw me um, in Fort Gordon, where I was talking a lot about the methods that we're using. And we can't kind of do a presentation without kind of mentioning our methods. So I'm going to just <laughs> run us through some of the stuff, and then we'll get the results in the cases. Uh, in Ruti, we're using uh, something called design thinking, which is this huge quotation here with a cool guy with a cool name and stuff like that. Uh, design thinking is a system that uses a designer's sensibility and methods to match people's blah 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 uh, blah <laughs> blah. Whereas we say in, uh, in uh, Ruti, we make the right stuff at the right time. And that's basically what we do. It's good that you take pictures on us so that we... <laughs> <laughs> Um, because behind every good and great idea in Ritter, there's at least 40 bad ones. Uh, our methods enables us to know which one is the good one among those 40 in just five days. And that's pretty awesome. Um, and um, we need to understand our customers uh, because without our customers, we're just kind of experts sitting in a room creating stuff that no one ever will use. Uh, and we need to understand uh, what our users are using, when they use it, and how they use it. And to help us do this, we create us this principles. So basically user experience principles or customer experience principles. Uh, and uh, we added a few more since last time. <laughs> And it's not about the principles, uh, it's more about what the principles enables us to do. Uh, because this kind of created a shift in how we do stuff in Ruti. Uh, we have collected knowledge about our customers for the past 10 years. We know a lot of them. Uh, we know what they need, we know what they think. And we have used a lot of time to actually plan projects, doing projects, making stuff, um, but with our method, we kind of just make stuff and get it out there. And we fail, and we fail fast, so that we know what to make at the right time. Um, so, um, it off. Uh, we just started making stuff, and we're going to present three of those things today, starting with... Automatic payment. Yay! So uh, this kind of goes on the, I think it was Nico, who was talking about beacons in all the different places. So in uh, Ruder we also have a very technologically driven uh, management. So they decided a while back to start using beacons. Beacons is awesome. Yes. So with, without really having that much of a plan, um, what the customers should use it for. So basically we are trying to figure out what the users can actually benefit from that kind of technology. And we started uh, uh, kind of looking into, can we make people stop thinking about normal ticketing? Uh, and we've, for the last couple of months, we've uh, made an MVP for invisible uh, payment. Uh, and it's a kind of hairy, uh, vision here, best user experience of all time, uh, but basically it's to make travel easier and have people stuff their mobile in their pocket without going looking at it or touching it all the time and just kind of go on the bus and go off the bus and never having to consider ticket. And so we came in this spring-ish. Yeah. Uh, and then the beacons have been up on a bunch of test buses for uh, almost a year, I think. Two or years, actually. Yeah, something like that. Something and like that. They, they had kind of like a technical proof of concept where they used it, but it was never kind of connected to anyone's personal money. So when people travel and it's not connected to money, you don't really care because it doesn't have an effect on you. So basically, we started looking at okay, how can we actually figure it out how the users want it? So we start with a quick and dirty idea phase where we kind of map out stuff we can do. Uh, 
we iterate on those. And here's the loops. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's kind of the where I went through the 40 ideas on there. And then we go out and test it with users right away. And uh, as we always say, we live in the best test lab of all time because you have literally hundreds and thousands of test users right outside our door. So we uh, go out and test it, and when you their money. That, that's a very important thing, the trust factor of do they trust Ruder? Do they trust us as their manager of money? Do they trust the technology? Do they feel safe? Do they think less about payment? Before, as our like CEO always said, no one wakes up in the morning thinking about, oh, today I really, really want to buy a ticket. And this is kind of like do they now think less about this? And are they more satisfied? That's kind of what we're trying Doesn't to figure it, out. Do they even want this? Exactly. We don't know. So that's why we need to test it. Yeah, it's one of the hypotheses is, of course, they want it, but we need to figure out how much they want it. How important is this in kind of justifying the Deacon's technology? So, in all these iterations, and this is uh, by no means done, but this is kind of our end product. That, uh, a lot of hypotheses that people need a lot of information. They need to know about Bluetooth, they need to know about payment systems, they need to know about mobile data, etc. etc. But it turns out all they really need is some kind of confirmation that it's all ready. You just step on the bus and you have a valid ticket. And how we figure it out is, of course, talking to those customers, getting those in to the room. Uh, and this is actually from uh, two months ago when we had uh, our onboarding for a pilot phase where we had 10 users for one month traveling solely with this app as their, uh, as their ticketing solution really. Yeah. Uh, didn't do anything else. We, we deleted all their uh, data from the original app we took away their travel cards. Yeah, we actually had to march like 10 people down to the customer service point and have them get refunded for their travel cards, etc. so that they actually felt real with the, yeah. the actual payment. Of they the shouldn't have a fallback because yeah, exactly. then they're safe. Yeah. We wanted to see, will they be safe with our new app yeah. or our new solution? <clears throat> Yeah, and uh, of course that means uh, we have to get up at the uh, ungodly hours to talk to our customers because it's uh, it's kind of when do they travel, when do they do their stuff, and we need to kind of follow their 24-hour uh, rhythm. So we actually travel with them, and uh, and we meet up at their home, often get a cup of coffee, <laughs> nice people, and then we just go to work with them, and generally then just observe what are their difficulties, what what do they like. When do they get annoyed? When do they not get annoyed? When they're happy? And when are they stressed? Yeah. You know, because they, then we kind of, because we sit in our room and we think we know stuff, but we really don't know anything. We don't know when they're stressful, when they're not stressful, when we kind of hold their hand and we, we need to hold their hand when we don't need to. Uh, and, and this one is actually one of those that, because there's a lot of different users, some need more hand-holding than others, and uh, she was one of the ones that didn't feel that safe, so she always kind of had her phone up in the in the bus looking at it, even though it always worked for her, but she never really trusted it that much. Yeah, and you get to know a lot of uh, details about the customers and what they do. But then we also figure out how well it works, when it works, uh, and how much people like it. Uh, and this was uh, it was an app that did in in addition to the just the automatic ticketing, we did a what's a post post payment? Yeah. Or uh, like invoicing at the end of the month. So they didn't really have to think about anything. They kind of set it up once, they traveled, and they didn't pay anything, and then we did a monthly capping because it was a single ticket solution. So every day they traveled, if they used to have a monthly ticket, which cost something, 
Uh, a single ticket would, of course, go above that if you travel enough. And then we did the capping solution, which made them not have to make their own strategies for payment. Because as most people know, when you, you come to the end of a month or end of a period or close to a holiday or close to a week and people start, uh, if I now skip this today or tomorrow, I will save $20 because I don't have to buy my ticket until like next week. And you, they come up with all these strategies for making money, which of course makes no sense. But that's how people think. And with this, it's kind of removing that as well. So people just travel. They don't need tickets. They don't need to consider money because we kind of take care of it. Yeah, and uh, you want to say something about this, I mean? Uh, yeah, well, this is an iteration we did post-test yeah. uh, because we uh, we had some um, some hardware issues. Which you guys are going to run into as well. <laughs> but it's about uh, in, in in geek speech uh, speech. It's uh, about triangulation of uh, a user going into a bus that. The, the ticket system doesn't always detect that a user is on the bus. Um, and we had some problems with that, uh, which got worse during the test. Uh, so we wanted to kind of see if, what if we don't talk about tickets at all? What if you just don't, ticket is not a word. You just go on a bus, you go where you want to go, and then that's it. So we made a system for that as well. And we're currently testing a few iterations of that, just to see can we actually remove the Norwegian word ticket from our systems. We don't know, but we're testing it. Uh, and of course, people like what what they know <laughs> from before. So I like my ticket system because it's easy. No, it's not easy, but you're used to it. And that's why it's easy. Yeah, and of course, uh, this goes into the GDPR discussion as well, because when you use this kind of technology, it's based around the fact that people all the time. That's what the technology, that's how it works. And if we are going to do that, we need to give them something in return. And we see that when we when we ask them about it, because they, they get their GDPR uh, opt-in, opt-out thing. and. Uh, that's kind of what this project is, is to figure out what is that added value that actually gives them something in return for giving us access to their data. Because our, that data is extremely important to us because we can use that later for planning our routes, etc., etc. So we should actually view data as a currency. It's not something we own, it's something that our users own. Uh, and they're paying us with their data, and we need to add value to that data. If not, there's no, why should they share their data with us? It makes no sense. So this is a new iteration, um, because after this test, we wanted to see if we could create uh, the ultimate feeling of flow on the journey, uh, with a touch of magic, see if we got some new technology, cool stuff to do. Uh, and we even had um, a goal, and that was to find what was what is a personal travel assistant in the future, giving you a ticket, giving you stuff. Uh, we don't know, so we kind of started the same project, uh, going um, uh, on trying to kind of understand what our users want based on all the tests, what how how do they like it, traveling and stuff like that. And we came up with a couple of ideas. Um, it's, it's kind of an artificial intelligence uh, mixed with our designer's dog. So it's kind of a travel uh, companion for kids, uh, which basically holds your hand and it's smart and it gives you the information that you need to know. You're going off in the next stop. Stuff like that. And before we got to test this, this happened. I was talking about our method, um, and we got this method that we got an, almost an autonomous team. Uh, we got designers, interaction designers, 
uh, project managers, developers, developers uh, stupid people like us who talks all the time. Uh, data, data analysis. Yeah, uh, in the same room. Uh, and they're actually, they can make decisions on their own. If they see something uh, during a project, uh, they can actually go on and follow that. So this was our um, uh, team leader posted this on our, our um